there are policies, but also we gotta recognize policy versus practice. And so when we think about policy-wise, I think about the quality of life, I think about healthcare, I think about jobs, we're talking about economic and workforce development. I'm thinking about education. And so something that strikes me currently is when we think about education and we think about school push out, oftentimes that is not being uplifted about how young girls of color often are pushed out of school, particularly when schools, uh, the forms of discipline that they choose, when they're choosing suspension and expulsion versus um, conversation and, and, and really getting to the root of the problem. And you know, a lot, of, a lot of kids, particularly young girls of color, particularly black girls, particularly black trans girls, and I'm, I'm naming it that way because I sit with intersecting identities that often are oppressed. And we haven't even talked about other intersecting identities that are currently oppressed, such as faith-based, such as if you're a person practicing Islam, such as sexuality, right? We're just talking about gender identity, but we haven't really got down to the nut and bolts, I should say, of all of our in, uh, intersecting identities that are currently being oppressed, right? So when we think about uh, school push up particularly, we aren't having a conversation in policy where we have folks of colors of different, I would say, uh, particularly young girls of color with different um, able body, I should to say. We're not talking about mental health, right? We're not talking about the PTSD that kids experience, right? Whether it's generational, whether it's not having support, there aren't conversations happening. And I'm really concerned of how policies are being made without the voices of young girls at the color, at that at the seat, excuse me, where young girls of color are not at the seat and, and the variety of young girls, right? I think about that. I also wanna address uh, something around homelessness, right? Still today, we have young black girls who do not have housing. We still have young black girls who do not have housing. That's an issue, right? And currently, we also have policies, um, I'm speaking again from the intersecting identity, uh, where we're having a conversation about removing transgender protection as it pertains to religious freedom, where a healthcare provider can deny someone of uh, giving them access to care. When we're now having another conversation um, in a Supreme Court about whether it's legal for LGBT folks to have protections at jobs. So when we're thinking about the quality of life and we're thinking about young girls who hold many different identities, not just being black, not just being a, 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 a girl, but also their sexuality, again, whether they're able, able body to move or not, there are many things that we need to start looking around around girls of color and how they show up in the world and making sure that all of their uh, quality of life are met through a holistic lens. Um, so something that I, that New York did in 2016 when uh, Speaker Melissa Marverito was in office, one of the things that happened that was amazing was the Young Women Initiative. And so what what came out of that was an intergenerational conversation with young girls and women in careers, such as doctors, uh, police officers, across all aspects of life, to really sit down with young girls to hear what was missing. And so there were conversations that were hi highlighted in a steering committee, such as education, right? Again, that's where school push up uh, was discussed. Uh, school to prison pipeline was discussed. Then we talked about anti-violence right, and, and what that looks like. We weren't talking about uh, what girls also experience in terms of cat calls. We weren't talking about incarceration and what that looks like. We also weren't talking about the intersectionality of uh, young girls and mental health transgender, all of those things were discussed. And then we looked at jobs. So we looked at uh, workforce development. And so what's required is that each state has something like that where young girls can sit down and talk with uh, women who are in careers to talk about what's missing, right? But also holding space for the women who didn't get that type of support. And I think that often gets missed as well. Because oftentimes we focus on young, young, but we're not talking about the woman who's secretly crying because her needs were never met. And so oftentimes when I'm doing these panels, I hold my mom in this space, being a first generation American, that my mom wasn't supported, right? And so we need to start creating spaces of healing as well. We need to fund folks for their narrative and their stories, particularly because storytelling is in our DNA, right? When we look at history, uh, it doesn't capture the fullness of our, our 
people of color history, but one thing that stands true is storytelling. From the minute that you're in the kitchen with your grandma, your mom, and they're cooking, that's when storytelling was born birth it. And so I think we need to support and fund after school programs as well uh, for, for storytelling as well. And just also we need to cancel religious uh, faith biases, you know, policies that, that prevent folks from actually living a quality life based off of religion. religion. I feel like there, there is enough. We have enough. We have we have abundance, but there's a scarcity and greed tactic that prevents us from creating uh, equity for everyone. So I'll just stop there.